Welcome to another exciting episode of Writing Through the Unknown. I'm your host, Michael, and I want to thank you all for joining me on this special episode on a Friday night. And when I introduce my guest, I think you all are going to be in for a true surprise and treat and are going to be so grateful you tuned in for this episode. And with that being said, it is my distinct pleasure, my honor, and my blessing to introduce you all to the one, the amazing, the wise one, Alfred Weber. Michael, well, thank you very much. And it is my distinct honor to be here. Uh, And uh, I'm looking forward to uh, <clears throat> laying before the audience and sharing with you the emergence of the omniverse uh, in our time and opening the doors of omniversity to you and to the audience. Yes, uh, I'm so grateful you and transparency to all of everyone watching we were backstage and alfred was sharing that he was going to share with us how we're going from where we are today in our universe to how we got to the multiverse and to the omniverse so we're going to get a full history so you guys are in for a true treat and i am so grateful for this information And so I am going to allow you to take and start where you want to start. Excellent. Um, Well, good. Uh, I just want to say this, what we'll be covering. uh, This is uh, the third book in my Omniverse trilogy. It's called Emergence of the Omniverse. And... We are in that time period in our world Earth history in which the omniverse emerges into our world society and our culture. And we have three great cosmological bodies um, in, in uh, in our Earth culture, the universe, the multiverse, and the omniverse and our universe uh which is a singularity of time energy space and matter was first uh discovered by the sumerian astronomers uh uh, about uh let's say uh two 2000 BC or so. And that's when the knowledge of the systematic knowledge of uh, our cosmos began to be developed here uh, with the the universe. And uh, the next evolution was with the discovery of the multiverse. Uh, And what the multiverse is, uh, its definition is the sum of all the universes. Uh, And it was first coined uh, in 1895 by the American uh, scientist William James. Um, And there are two Stanford scientists who have made an estimate of the number of universes in the multiverse and in their terms, the number of universes in the multiverse is quote, humongous. Uh, In uh, mathematical terms, it's 10 to the seventh to the seventh. And uh, that number is so large that we don't have a name for it. But if you were to write it out in, uh, you know, manually or in 12-point type, 
it would be more than 290 million miles long. That's the number of universes in the multiverse, and we're in one such universe. Now, I don't know if if I can, because uh, uh, I'm not that familiar with uh, StreamYard. Uh, I, I had sent over um, a link to our uh, uh, e-learning platform, Omniversity. Uh, can you? Oh, yes, good. Uh, and so here, here we have Omniversity. Just like we have universities, well, universities were first chartered, uh, starting with the discovery of the universes uh, by uh, the uh, Sumerian uh, astronomers. Uh, they were uh, chartered to study uh, the uh, universes and uh, the established sciences of the universes of time, energy, space, and matter. And so we are now developing the omniversities and the omniversities are chartered to share the knowledge of our multidimensional reality and sciences. And uh, what we have found is that universities sort of represent uh, you know, are gatekeeping our new knowledge uh, and they're gatekeeping the scientific study of the spiritual dimensions of the omniverse, which are the scientific study of the soul, life after death, the interlife, spirit, reincarnation, spiritual beings and source, as well as uh, exosciences such as quantum access, teleportation, time travel, psi sciences such as the study of psi, ESP, telekinesis, and telepathy. Uh, and uh, here I'm just going to bring in uh, more here. Um, if if you look, you remember uh, the the Einstein equation for the universes of E equals M C squared. Correct. Well, the equation describing the omniverse is as follows: omniverse equals multiverse. In other words, the sum of all universes that. Uh, uh, equal 10 to the seventh to the seventh plus the spiritual dimensions and the spiritual dimensions themselves equal the um, intelligent civilization of souls plus the spiritual beings plus source and all of this is now studied scientifically using the scientific method. Uh, it's not a matter of faith. So uh, the emergence of the omniverse represents in human society the integration of science and spirituality. Uh, okay. Um, I just, I don't mean to interrupt, but I, I don't know if you opened a new page because we're still on the Y yes, university I, page. I did. Uh, uh, what I did is I went here and I opened a new page on this, on, on this particular. Uh, I think thing. you need to reshare the page because we're still looking at the original page. We didn't oh, see the okay. second page. Let, let, 
let me just get that here. Uh, and uh, I'll, I'll get that for you. I don't know. Let me, let me just share that again. I'm not your, your best person. Uh, I'll uh, uh, share with that. And I'll bring it. Uh, let's see, do I, I present this? And I where it says slides, do I put that? How, how do I share this again? There should be a link on the bottom. Um, present share screen. Oh, yeah. And you just click it says, uh, the window. Then it says, it says present. It says stop screen. Should, should I hit stop screen? It might. Yes, you might need to because you're already. Yeah. So I'll, I'll on that one. Present, share screen. And then uh, I hit share screen again. And, and don't I, feel bad. I'm not techie either. Yeah. So. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So let me see if I got this one correct. Yeah. So there's why. Uh, Omniversity, so that the omniverse equation equals omniverse equals multiverse. Uh, in other words, the sum of all the universes, uh, uh, which is uh, um, uh, all, all of the universes are, are uh, 10 to the seventh. To, to, to the seventh plus the spiritual dimensions and the spiritual dimensions equals the intelligent civilization of souls plus spiritual beings plus source or God. And the totality of the spiritual dimensions equal what we know as God. So you and I and all of us humans actually function as part of God. That's what we do. And this is uh, 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 what, what we do as uh, uh, from a from a scientific point of view, we all have a function in the creation and maintenance of the physical universes, uh, of all the humongous physical universes, creation and maintenance of the physical universes that, that exist, we all, as members of the uh, uh, intelligent civilization of souls um, and of the spiritual dimensions are actually functioning as part of God, even though within the spiritual dimensions, God as such is a separate component. So this is what we teach within Omniversity. And uh, starting on September 30th, 2024, we're going to be getting the first proposals. We put this out for bid on LinkedIn. And it was so many people bid on it. We had over 24 of their uh, webmasters bidding. It was so large that they had to cut it off. <laughs> and we're going to be taking the best bids from the webmasters, and they're going to be building an online omniversity. Uh, and in that omniversity, uh, you'll come on. And uh, you'll be able to take classes and courses uh, 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 in this uh, subject matter. And uh, you'll be able to access Omniverse books. The, the first course that I'll be giving is uh, a course on the uh, based on the emergence of the omniverse. 
And that'll be, uh, each course has about 10 to 12 classes. And each class um, has uh, a uh, about a 60-minute video class to it. And then uh, we, uh, you'll, you'll, you'll be able to uh, uh, access each course and uh, based on your own schedule, get that and go through that and then access the Omniverse books. And uh, uh, we've been, um, some of the, um, of the, uh, uh, one of the bidding webmasters is associated with Simon Fraser University here in uh, Vancouver, BC, which is one of the universities here. And so from a long range point of view, we're going to be seeking accreditation. That's going to take a long time. I've been working with a lot of the universities over time, trying to get these subject matters to be recognized by the departments. And they all say, oh, Alfred, you're 10 years ahead of your time. <laughs> you know, they don't want to give me accreditation. You know, so you could get it part of your decree. But the Omniversity, you know, it's where we're, we're here and we're, we're knocking on the doors, right? Right. And so, I judge it's needed right now. It's with everyone's waking up that it's perfect timing to be offering this because everyone's awareness is getting more. And with that, I'm curious because I've been sitting here toying in my mind going, we were talking about ascension and the opening of the mind to where people's our awareness are, you know, we're not just humans. We're more than just human. And a lot of people are saying we're going to 4D and 5D. And so I'm curious, would you say the universe equates to 3D? The multiverse equates to the 4D level. And the omniverse be the 5D level, or am I mixing things together that don't mix? Well, that's an interesting analogy that could have some validity. Uh, not totally, because you could have a 3D person understand from a mental point of view, uh, the multiverse, they've been, uh, uh, you know, the multiverse was discovered in 1895 and there's been a lot of multiverse science that has been uh, developed and uh, uh, certainly and practiced from a 3D point of view. Uh, but uh, it's, a, it's a good analogy to kind of work with if it furthers understanding. Uh, and uh, 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 I think the great shift is this also, in addition to what you just said, is that the omniverse represents a shift from the afterlife, the human soul, life after death, spiritual beings, and God being a matter of faith to being the subject of science and scientific study. And that is a main shift because in, in the omniverse, we use the scientific method 
and scientific protocols and the same scientific method that we use to study the universes of time, energy, space, and matter, which the scientific method is used since the time of the Sumerians, we use it to study uh, the spiritual dimensions, namely the soul, life after death, the afterlife, spiritual beings, and source. So that is represents our evolution as beings is we become super capable to be able to navigate and internalize our understanding of the afterlife from a scientific perspective whereby we can analyze it and we can analyze God and the spiritual beings and our the nature of our afterlife, not as a matter of faith, but as a matter of science, using scientific protocols in the same way that, you know, we all took high, high school physics. Those of us who went to college, we took university science. Well, uh, at Omniversity, we use science to study uh, the afterlife, to study the intelligent civilization of souls, spiritual beings, and source. I'm not sure if that addresses your, your uh, question, which is a key, a key question in this area. And to ask the question is to begin to understand the nature of the evolution that humanity is now participating in. Over to you. I agree. And I've started to realize one of the shifts, too, that may be happening is I notice when I talk with people, we always say, well, in this universe, because I can touch this, I can feel this, so I know I'm in the universe. But that's not the universe. The universe is a mental um, kind of processing or awareness. Awareness, that's what I was looking for. And so living here, we have we have the understanding of here being one verse so universe so then what it's saying is when you become aware of more your mind has crossed over to the multiverse level so then if i'm following that right then how do you know when you are in multiverse thinking you have crossed over to the omniverse thinking because as you were saying multiverse is all the universes many of them so at what point can you go oh my awareness has definitely left multiverse and we've entered into omniverse sure uh you know it, it's again it's because we've entered the spiritual dimensions. The line of crossing here with the omniverse is the scientific study of the spiritual dimensions. And the content of the spiritual di dimensions is the intelligent civilization of souls plus the spiritual beings, plus source or God. So as soon as we've crossed over into uh, begin to deal scientifically with the intelligent civilization of souls, with the afterlife, um, 
with uh, um, with spiritual beings uh, and with source from a scientific point of view, that's when we're dealing with the omniverse. I'll give you a very uh, concrete example. There are now the equivalent of internet sites like internet uh, stream yard sites uh, where on one side I'll be like one of us is here anchored in 3D and on the other side it'll be a soul in the afterlife and we'll be having a conversation and it's a way to have uh, a conversation between a soul in the afterlife and a human in 3D. And uh, those are things which are now features of the age of the omniverse uh, and uh, which are features of the age of the omniverse and which we can explain them through the science of the omniverse so that we have actual real-time communication, uh, not only through dreams uh, or through mediums, but now we have actual uh, Zoom-like, uh, through Zoom or other technologies, uh, where we'll have uh, technological communication between uh, souls in the afterlife uh, who have agreed to come into communication with uh, uh, conscious beings here uh, who are anchored in uh, 3D and will have conversations back and forth. Now, uh, those conversations go better the more that the uh, the being the the human being who's in the three D is more aware of the science of the omniverse. Uh, this is, uh, as I mentioned, this is the emergence of the omniverse book. Uh, we, we have it now. I just want to see if I have it. Yeah, I just want to show it to people so that uh, people can see where we are technologically in this. Here is the Chinese translation of my Omniverse book. Chinese. Now, there are one billion internet users in China. Okay? So that we're getting this information out to one billion people in China, you see? So this is you know, this is now, we are now entering the age of the emergence of the omniverse. And there are so many uh, uh, different, and this is coming just at the time when we are moving forward and out of an era of war and separation and fear so that, uh, uh, you know, how can we move out of that uh, <laughs> duality consciousness of I win, you lose, which is the duality consciousness into the unity consciousness of we are one. Uh, and that is the great challenge that Omniversity has. Omniversity has 
a learning platform in Shanghai, China. Uh, and there are 1.1 billion internet users in Shanghai, you know, based there in China, out of Shanghai, China. So, and this is what you're talking about uh, there. And uh, this is in, and uh, it's translated into German and into Spanish and into Hungarian. And uh, uh, this is something that, that we have to do. And uh, so we have to uh, move away from the duality consciousness. And our, our mission is to move humanity uh, through the science of the omniverse uh, into uh, unity consciousness into uh, uh, understanding firmly uh, the integration of science and spirituality and uh, that uh, that was uh, very much I, I want to show you one one other book too which i think is very important uh uh because it's kind of what people say well alfred why are you doing this you know and so that people understand these are some of the other books that we have this is a book that i wrote it's called my journey landing heaven on earth and it's got about 750 pages on it and this talks about my first voyage on an extraterrestrial spacecraft this was started in february 1973 and uh uh, it tells the, the, the whole story and uh, uh, to cut to the chase there, uh, uh, I was uh, at the time in N New York City and uh, my then wife, who was a Peruvian architect, had converted uh, what was a a loft, a commercial loft in the Green Street area filled with religious artifacts of, uh, you know, Jer Jesus, Mary and Joseph and all the religious artifacts and kind of an artist area. And um, I was working there late at night and suddenly this light came down on me and uh, I went into what people call a missing time experience. And this, uh, uh, suddenly this consciousness started talking to me. And I began talking to it. And I said, Wait a minute, who, who are you? And it said, I am the Holy Spirit, as in God. And we conversed back and forth and uh then it said it occurred to, to, to ask it says and who am i and it said thou art peter and upon this rock i will found my church and i went what because extraterrestrials are known to give contactees messianic messages that, you know, imbue them with a lifelong set of purpose. So that was the quotation from the Gospel of Matthew with St. Peter, you know, uh, that thou art Peter and upon this rock, I'll, you know, so all, all of a sudden I was being 
you know, oh my God, this is going to be, I'm going to have to move with this and all this is like, you know, is this St. Peter and is this moving forward? But so you can see that I slowly climbed all of these levels, you know, being taught by these different levels of consciousness coming up through the messianic, through learning, and then I went into more and more back into the learning of the science of the omniverse. And now we've come to the omniversity and the science of the omniversity and gone through those bands of the messianic and gotten through that to the other side. I'm not sure if I've been able to communicate, but that's part of what we're offering as well is a sense of proportion of the journey that humanity is on now. Right. And I love how you are stating it's science with spirituality. So you're not saying, you know, you take this course, you're going to get all the answers. You don't have to do any personal work. It, you know, and because I know some people are all about that. They're like, I don't want to do the personal work. So if you offer me a way to gain the understanding without that, I'm all for it. And this is something where you have to do the personal work to grow. And so I love how you're merging both of those side by side. So those that are of the scientific mindset will be along on the ride as well as those of the spiritual mind and blending them. So thank you for that. Well, thank you for, for stating that and for reflecting that back in such an amazing way. I mean, really, you have really validated uh, this work here in the most amazing way. And I really want to humbly acknowledge that and thank you very very much because that has been the essence of it that's been the essence of it and uh, uh, you know that that is how we move it and uh, if people go to universebooks.com you'll see there we have 25 books or so uh, of omniverse books and all of them are offered at uh, Omniversity and uh, come this fall in October, November, we'll be offering uh, classes and courses with the books and uh, uh, it's very much in in the spirit uh, that uh, and in the sacred space and that you uh, have so aptly uh, described. Uh, and I feel very humbled by, by your statements. Uh, and uh, thank you very, very much. I, I, I really, uh, 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 feel that way. Well, thank you. And I can humbly say it's only because you took the first step and you took the momentous leap forward to do the work, to start the path so that those of us coming behind you can see it and be like, this is where we need to go. And so thank you for taking that leap of faith and that leap and finding it for us. This is our 
our world is is a uh, is a world that uh, is going to take a great deal of collective insight and effort and time to bring to collective ascension. It is not something that they'll press a button up there and it's going to go and it'll ascend and then we'll, we'll all have a picnic. It's not going to be that way because we incarnate here to develop for soul development. And it's a great privilege to incarnate on earth. Uh, this was chosen uh, by a universe son of God who incarnated here uh, as Joshua ben Joseph uh, 2,000 years ago at the height of the Kali Yuga. <laughs> And and that and, and the Kali Yuga occurs. We have two sons, and, and the Kali Yuga occurs when the two sons are at the maximum distance from each other. You know, because they, they they rotate every twenty five thousand years, so they're twelve thousand five hundred years from each other, and that's when evil is at its maximum, and that's when Joseph and Joseph chose to incarnate in a particular race as a Hebrew. Uh, and, uh, uh, and uh, excuse me, I, I haven't turned off my, not my phone. And, and, uh, uh, and, and that alone, if, if we look at it now, uh, uh, you and I are talking on September 20th, uh, 2024. And, and uh, uh, if we look at it now, almost 50,000 Palestinians have been slaughtered uh, in a condition that I myself as a founding judge of the Natural and Common Law Tribunal for Public Health and Justice can say are uh, violations of the International Criminal Court Statute uh, and are war crimes and genocide. And uh, 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 we seem to be uh, Here is another book that we just published. It's called We Awakening Humanity are the Soul Infrastructure, S-O-U-L, of the Second Coming of Christ. And if you look at that, this is the solar system. And that's the asteroid belt. And the asteroid belt is the planet Tiamat that uh, 207,000 years ago in the middle of a human reptilian nuclear war was turned into an asteroid belt. That was a planet. That was a huge Earth-like planet with 202 billion human souls that had to be teleported to Earth and are now incarnating on Earth. And that's what could happen to Earth at this time if, if the nuclear war that on the one hand Israel and on the other hand Iran and those powers, which are aimed at each other, go toward their nuclear war. 
And we, on the other hand, that are trying to bring the science of the omniverse before that happens. And so we've just brought out this document that we awakening humanity of the soul infrastructure of the second coming of Christ. And the second coming happens so as to prevent that. Here, here is the back cover. Jesus' first coming to earth was intentionally timed 2,000 years before the acute focalization of 2024 plus of threatened Tiamat-like nuclear destruction of Earth, sentient inorganic AI artificial intelligence terraforming of Earth and divine souls into bots, materialization of an age of antichrist on Earth and of powerful antichrist capable of destroying Jesus's mission of the kingdom of God on Earth necessitating Jesus' second coming at this time with planetary ascension of earth and its human souls to a density of the kingdom of God beyond the AI artificial intelligence and the negative Luciferian spirit, spiritual beings and interdimensional Draco reptilian souls. So that's the context in which we find ourselves and in which we find the science of the omniverse being what we can preempt all of this and bring us up to 5D. So we are at a moment unlike any other, which was last seen when Tiamat was turned into the asteroid belt Query, will Earth be turned into an asteroid belt? No, because Jesus came and drew a line in the sand and said, no, Earth will not become a second asteroid belt. And that's what Netanyahu doesn't know. And that's why Iran doesn't know. Well, it also makes sense why when we see... A lot of the UFO stories, they seem to be showing in larger numbers near where nuclear weapons are or bases are. And it confounds all the military when they appear and everything is nullified. So I think that, again, goes to show where you're saying, yeah, they're not going to allow us as a species to take and make a second asteroid belt they're doing everything they can to nullify and stop it but i i do have to wonder though if humanity you know makes a choice will they abide by the choice or will they say no you guys made another wrong choice let's make another choice we're not going to let you destroy this. Indeed. Indeed. So that's where we are now. So the science of the omniverse is here. And I kind of have to wonder with all the chaos and all the strangeness that's going on in the world today. I mean, not just in the U.S., but everywhere. I can't help wondering if it's like the universe's way of saying, okay, you guys chose wrong. We're giving you a second chance. Look at what you're doing. Please make the right choice this time. <laughs> Indeed. Indeed. And we are the planet of the cross. The Urantia book says that we're known as the planet of the cross. Namely that Joshua ben Joseph came here. He incarnated as a, as a Hebrew. So 
So I'm kind of curious your take on my understanding of us as a species. And when I say us, I mean human beings. Originally, we were known as the children of the gods. So we had divine birthrights. Then somewhere, maybe around the Council of Nicaea, we stop being all of a sudden the children of the gods. And we are the children who are born of sin and need to, you know, try and gain favor with the God to get that removed and enter heaven. So why do you think it was so important to them to remove our divine birthright? What was so threatening in that time frame that they had to put a stop to it and, in essence, erased it from future generations' memories? That's that's a good question. You ask very, very good questions. And I think that there, you're not talking about the Hebrews. There you're talking about what the church <laughs> did in trying to appropriate uh, the spiritual mission of the incarnation of the divine son of God here. Right. And the church, I view as being affected by the Draco reptilians. Yeah. And make, and make it un, unto themselves because all of the negativity that we have, if, if we look at the Hebrews now, the, the, uh, the leadership in, in Israel, the leadership in Iran, the leadership in Hamas, the, 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 the leadership in all the major nations at the soul level, they're all draconian souls. They're not human. So uh, 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 you know, those are human souls masquerading in various roles to try and keep us away from the divine mission of the incarnation of a son of God here. And, and uh, uh, so we're, we're now looking to awaken, awaken humanity awaken humanity right we're we're getting close to the hour mark and so out of respect with you and your time that you have provided i want to take a moment and again allow you to promote your books and where people can find yeah. you and everything yeah, well, it's it's very easy. Uh, <clears throat> people can go to universebooks.com and begin to uh, look at the books there and the Omniverse books. And uh, you can go to omniversity.us and begin to learn more about Omniversity. And uh, later on in the fall, starting around uh, October, November, you can begin to enroll in classes by going to omniversity.us and omniversity.net. And you can always reach me through my website at exopolitics at exopolitics.com. And Michael, I, I want to thank you deeply for allowing me to speak openly. Thank you very much. You're very welcome. And um, 
I had a question just pop in my head, and I've been trying to formulate it, and I'm not quite sure I'm there yet, but I I feel like I'm going to throw it out there because of what's going on. And you were pointing out the Draco influences on all the nations that are, you know, doing strife and everything in the world. And so do you feel like the reason they, that we have so many wars on this planet is the Draco influence on those nations? Because it seems like the nations that you were calling out are always the ones that are kind of involved with or pushing a war agenda. And so is that help feed them and put them into the energy of we're going to create what we want and, and, and keeps like the Jesus Christ energy from coming? Yes, I, I think that the, the Draco uh, program for Earth is war, disease, crime, and poverty. And uh, what we need is unity consciousness. We are one around love. And that was the message of the divine Son of God that incarnated here. Uh, Yes. You know, it's interesting you point that out because I started thinking about the story when Jesus was with the money changers and was flipping the tables and telling them to get out. And everybody goes, well, because they broke the law. They were selling and making money in a sacred temple. And I feel like on another level, that was the surface explanation. But on a deeper level, these people were taking and creating a schism in the people by becoming wealthy or everybody else was poor. And so it was breaking the unity. And that's where Christ was like, nope, I'm not going to have you breaking unity in this sacred place. You need to get out. Would you agree with that? Yeah. So thank you again for coming on and sharing all of this information with us. And I have to say one thing that I feel like is truly special about your, the omniversity that you're creating is that you're doing it on the individual's pace. You're not making everybody sign up by a certain date, only a certain number of people at a time. So you're not limiting the information. You're actually making it available for all whenever they want. And I think that's a beautiful thing that I think a lot of the universities and the university system could learn from because not everybody is available at the same time with work or a life situation. So thank you for creating a system that is truly a system where nobody can say, well, I couldn't make it because of this. There's no possibility of anyone not being able to access your university. So thank you for that. Excellent. You know, you you are one of the most perceptive people that I have come across re- recently. So thank you. Well, thank you for that. And since we're at the end of the hour, one thing that I like to ask and a lot of people seem to gravitate towards is from your life experience from childhood to adulthood doesn't have to be anything in particular what would be a golden nugget that you would like to leave the audience with oh from my childhood it could be anytime i just i don't like to narrow it down and people are like oh 
well, in this field, it'd be this. I'm, uh, I'm letting you have open access, in other words. Yeah, I, I would say, I mean, uh, always maintain an open mind. That, that's what comes to me at this moment, maintain an open mind. I think that's beautiful, and I think, you know, that's, I couldn't think of anything to add to that, so thank you for that. That is wisdom right there, and so thank you again for coming on. Thank you to everyone who's in the chat room and to everyone who's watching this, so from our heart to yours, wherever you are in the world, make it a wonderful day, mm -hmm. afternoon, evening. If you're asleep, feel free to wake up and tune into this episode. Shameless plug. <laughs> but in all honesty, take and make each day, fill it with love and joy. And as Alfred Weber politely and succinctly said keep an open mind that is i think one of the things that's missing in our world is if we kept an open mind i feel like there would be more love and understanding in the world because too many things are started because of misunderstandings so thank you again and thank you to everyone have a wonderful night, and we will see you all on the next episode. Good night. Good night, Michael.